Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. We're in week 38 and if you're new here, don't worry, I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can go back and watch any of the other videos in this series that you might have missed. We're making a quilt on a garden theme, roughly one block a week and if a quilt's not for you, don't worry because each of our panels works perfectly well as a piece of standalone textile art. Let me start by taking around what's on my table. I'm starting with my backing fabric, which is my yellow spot fabric, and this is cut to a square that is 20 by 20 centimetres. I've also got some scraps of some other fabrics that I've been using. I've got my brown, my green 5mm stripe, and I've got a second panel that is 20 by 20 centimetres. That's my bug fabric that inspired the colour scheme. And we're going to join these together top to bottom at the end of the video. I've got some paper, just some scrap paper there to make a template. And I've got a selection of embroidery threads, quite an unusual selection this week. These are all Anchor brand. So I've got my pale yellow, which is 300. My darkest green, which is 683. My mid green, which is 258. My light green, which is 255. My dark brown, which is 380 and my mid brown which is 357. I've also got some machine cotton and my paper scissors and embroidery scissors and then I've got a bunch of marking tools, my pencil, heat erase pens and I will use an aqua marker. I've also got some fusible webbing. Now we normally use Bonder Web but I thought I'd try a new product. I hope the camera picks up the texture on the back. So this is the glue side. It is very differently constructed from Bonder Web. This is the glue side compared and that's the paper side compared. And you can already see this new one is much more opaque than Bonder Web. Uh, the paper's much thicker, the glue seems much thicker. This is a hemline product called Heat and Seal. It's actually quite a lot less expensive and I wondered how well it would hold up compared to Bonder Web. You've seen in lots of videos where the paper backing on the Bonder Web comes away from the glue mesh and this one does feel more robust. You get a much bigger piece for your money. So this is 17 inches by 43.3 or 43 centimetres by 1.1 metres. So you get a, a massive piece. I will try and find it online and put a link in the description below. I also got a template for this week. It's a fairly simple template, but if you're not confident to drawing, then this is available for you. We're going to make a snail this week. This is the last in our garden creature series. So we've made a bee and we made a butterfly and a ladybird. The bee was probably the simplest that had lots of textured embroidery. We put some buttons on our ladybird the butterfly we made three-dimensional and gave it some quilted wings and we're going to do something a little bit different with our snail as well so all of the pieces in this little series have had something unusual about them you can get this from our website the address at the bottom of the screen it costs one pound to download it's just a nominal charge to help cover the cost of making these videos and help support this channel so I'm going to start in my usual way. I've got my light box out just for the sake of filming. You could just hold this up to a window. It would work perfectly well. And I'm going to position my fabric over the top, lining up with the outside square on my template. And then I'm going to use an aqua marker because we are going to use some fusible webbing and I don't want it to erase every time I touch it with an iron. So I'm just going to go around the outline of my snail on the backing fabric just to give me some positioning lines. I don't need to be too fussy. This is just to give me an idea of where my pieces need to be. This aqua pen will just erase with water, so it's really easy. Then I'm going to flip my template over and I'm going to trace the body of the snail onto my fusible webbing. 
Now flipping it because this will be reversed, we're going to add this to the back of our fabric. So when we put it on our backing, it's going to be the other way around. So that's why we flip it. And you can see with the light box, you can see through it perfectly well. I've just extended the body into the shell there to make sure I don't have a gap. Now I've got my paper and I'm just going to trace the shape of the shell so that I've got it as a template. So let's roughly cut out the shape of the snail body. I'm going to roughly cut it at this point because we'll cut it precisely once this is fused to our fabric. So I'm just trimming off any excess there. And then I've got a little scrap of my brown fabric. I'm going to put this glue side down onto the back of my fabric. So paper side up, glue side down onto the wrong side of your fabric. And the instructions for this one say that you just sweep the iron over the shape to smooth out any air bubbles and you hold it in place for just two to three seconds. So it's much quicker than bond web. So apparently that's enough to melt the glue and fuse your shape to the fabric. So I'm just going to allow that to cool and then I can bring back in my paper scissors because we are cutting through paper here and I'm going to cut that shape out precisely. As usual, try to turn the fabric and not the scissors. You'll get a much more precise line. It's much easier to follow these fiddly shapes particularly around the antennae there. So I'm going to peel the paper backing off. It was actually quite a lot tougher. You can see I've got a needle in my hand there because I had to hook it with a needle in the end, but um, I don't think it's just going to fall off randomly. So it's a good sign. And then I'm going to position that against my guidelines on the backing fabric, glue side down. So this time the fabric is the right way up. I love it already. Then we are going to hold an iron over it for about 10 seconds just to fuse the glue. Please excuse my hand, I had a bit of a fall at work the other week and was carrying a laptop and I was so keen on preserving the laptop that I didn't really think about what was going to happen to me and so I landed rather than with the flat of my hands down, I landed on the back of my hand and messed it up. So please forgive my stupidity, I know it looks a bit gross but... Um, I am okay. <laughs> you can also probably hear I've got a terrible cold. The trials of starting a new job. So there we go. Our snail body is attached. And before we go any further, I'm going to put a little bit of stitching on this just to make it permanent and hold it in place. So I've got two strands of my mid brown here, and I'm just going to running stitch around the edge of the shape, just inside that snail body shape. So I'm bringing my needle up from the back and going down a little further on from where the thread comes out and then coming up again a little bit further on and going back down. So running stitch, really easy, up and down motion. And I say this all the time, but I think it looks much more professional if the spaces between your stitches are smaller than the stitches themselves. So that's my shape stitched down and now I'm just going to add a bit of texture to that body and I'm going to do this in a similar way to what we did with the B. I'm just going to put some straight stitches following the curve of that snail body. So carrying on with my mid brown and I'm just going to put some fairly random different lengths of stitches across the body running vertically from its antennae down to the tail. So I'll make them sort of curve as they go down and I'm going to do this with three different colours. So my mid brown, my dark brown and my darkest green as well. You can stitch up the antennae. I haven't. It does seem like a really good bond this one but I thought that if they do come loose they will just look a little bit three-dimensional so I'm not going to fuss too much about it. So I've done my mid brown I'm going to put some dark brown in there I'm going to focus this on the bottom side the lower side of the body 
So you can see me just almost running stitching, but I'm not being careful at all about whether the stitches are even. I just want to add a little bit of shade, I suppose, to the bottom of the body. And then finally, I've got two strands of dark green and I'm going to focus this on the upper side of the body. And once I put in my dark green straight stitches, I'm just going to add in my snail trail in that dark green as well. So this is the same colour thread that we've used for all of the flight paths and crawl trails for our little creatures that we've made and I'm just running stitching down into the seam allowance at the bottom of the block so that I can make this look like it's continuing. You could wait until the end to do this when our blocks are together, but I just had some green left in my needle, so I thought I'd do it. And that's our snail body with the straight stitches. I'm just going to add a little bit more texture. I've got two strands of my light yellow here, and I'm just going to add some very tiny French knots so you can see me just wrapping once there to add a little bit more sort of mottled texture to the snail's body so to make a French knot I'm going to bring my needle up keep that thread taut wrap the thread over the top of the needle and take down the needle just slightly away from where it came up holding on to the thread so that it stays taut right up until the last minute so rest the needle on the thread wrap over the top once take the needle back down through the fabric catching a couple of threads of the backing fabric and pull through and this is just going to add a little bit of speckly texture to the body of the snail and it also brightens it up a little bit because it is quite dark at the moment. Being quite random, focusing down the centre of the snail's body and that's our snail body done. Really love those little dots, I think that totally made it. So now we're going to work on the shell and I'm going to cut out my snail shell shape that I traced earlier. So that's going to sit just onto the snail's body there and I'm going to get my green stripe fabric and I want to trace around this leaving some space around it so don't put it right at the edge give plenty of room around your snail body shape and you can see I've flipped over my template there because I want to make sure that the shell is the right way round when I'm using the right side of the fabric. So I'm working on the back of my fabric and I've flipped my pattern. In hindsight, I should have drawn this on the right side of the fabric so that I could see it when I was gathering, but you'll see why shortly. I ended up redrawing the pattern onto the right side of the fabric. So I'm just going to cut that out, leaving about a centimetre border, maybe a little bit more all the way around it's probably more like half an inch to be honest not wishing to mix measurements but um, it's a little bit more than a centimetre and I'm gonna stitch this as if I'm making a Suffolk puff so I've just turned over the edge of my shape there I've got some machine cotton in my needle and I'm just running stitching all the way around the edge folding it over a little hem as I go so my stitches here are about half a centimetre long. I don't want them too small, but I don't want massive stitches either because we are going to gather this up a little bit. And again, I call this series Winging It for a reason. I'm just making this up as I go along, as I'm filming. In hindsight, I would have put my template inside while I was gathering just to guide the shape that formed. That's a little tip if you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So when I get back to the beginning, I'm not going to finish off my thread. I'm just going to leave that thread loose. 
I've pinned my shape to the center of the snail shell and I'm using that as a guide for gathering and like I say it would have been much easier to put the template back inside and gather it around the template that would have formed the shape much more easily but this does work so I'm just gathering it until it's the same size as the shell that I've drawn on the paper we'll put this moment of craziness down to the fact that I've got a cold and I wasn't thinking very clearly. Either way, you want to gather that shell shape into the same size as the shell on your backing fabric. I've finished off my machine cotton nurse in a knot and trimmed it and I've unpinned it and I'm just evening out those gathers so that I don't have them all in one place. I'm just double checking the size of the shell. Now I'm going to applique stitch this shape onto the backing fabric. I've got two strands of my mid green here and I'm just bringing my needle up so it comes through both the backing fabric and the shell shape. Just making sure I'm working on the line and then I take my needle back down just through the backing fabric but I'm tucking my needle right up against the shape of the shell just so that the stitches are kind of invisible. They are going to be sort of underneath, so you're not going to see them very clearly. And I'm just going to make stitches that are fairly close together, right the way around the shell, and I'm going to stop short of where I started, so I leave a little gap, because we're going to fill this in a moment. Don't leave too much space between your stitches, because you don't want any holes for any filling to escape. So you can see I'm about an inch and a half away from my starting point and that's looking nice and billowy. We're going to stuff that now. So you can use offcuts of fabric from your quilt. We have been keeping all of our offcuts. It's a great way of filling things. I've just got a little bit of stuffing handy. You can also use bits of felt. Old pillows, if you wash them at 60 degrees or antibacterial wash them, the filling of old pillows works an absolute treat for stuffing. You never need to buy stuffing. Everybody's got old pillows kicking around. I don't want it to be rock hard, so I want some give on this because we are going to stitch it. Once you are happy with how full it is, you can carry on stitching down your shell to close the gap. And I do tend to stitch it up a little bit, see how much give is still left and add more stuffing if I need to. You can see me putting a little bit of extra stuffing in there. So once I'm done, I am going to re-sketch the swirl of the snail shell. Again, if I'd drawn my shape on the front of my fabric, I wouldn't have had to do this, but um, there we go. I've got two strands of my dark green here, and I'm going to backstitch along that line. And because there's quite a gap between where your needle's coming through the back of the fabric and where it comes out at the front there's a couple of ways you can do it you either just make sure your needle is absolutely perpendicular to the fabric as you're pushing it through or you can press down the filled section until it's almost flat and that means that you can identify where the needle's going to come through a little bit better so you can use your thumb to press down the middle if you want to. I just made sure my needle was totally perpendicular and that meant that I could get quite a neat line of back stitch. I've also joined the second block all I've done here is put them right sides together, marked the seam allowance and backstitched along the line with some machine thread. I've 
demonstrated this in loads of videos so I will link one at the top of the screen if you're not sure how to join blocks and I've sketched in a little crawl trail and I'm just going to go along that with two strands of my dark green thread. I did lose a little bit of footage hopefully you can see on the snail shell that I've also straight stitched over the swirls I did that with light green and mid green just to add a little bit of texture it was totally free handed so there's nothing technical there at all don't worry about the puckering because that often happens with trapunto when you stuff your fabric when we quilt it it will flatten out and won't be a problem so that's our finished block for this week i hope you've enjoyed that do share your creations at hashtag fsh 23 quilt be great to see your versions of our little snail if you've enjoyed this and want something similar i'll put some videos over here and if you are enjoying our content and want to see more of our videos just click on our logo down here it makes it really easy for you to subscribe have a great week making your little snail and i will see you in the next video thanks so much for watching see you next time bye